in a 3D fighting world, Tekken is king. In this series of episodes, we'll first take a deep dive into the character's martial art. In the second, we will examine what techniques the character uses, as well as rate how well they represent their martial art. In the final episodes, we'll look at other games that feature that fighting style and compare techniques. I'm Yon Fang, and welcome to my channel. Previously, we looked at the history of Savat, Shoson, and Bok Somse. We also have a small glimpse into Katarina's fighting style, but come on, why does she fight like this and not like this? Welcome back. You probably love the martial arts, maybe you just love fighting games, or you've probably noticed a growing trend of various martial artists analyzing different martial art techniques in Tekken and other fighting games. Personally, I think it's awesome, and today we will continue that trend that started with Paul Phoenix's Japanese art of Kudo and moved on to Josie's Filipino Yoyang. Today's video will feature Katarina's unique Defense Dance La Rue style of Zavak. I know what you're thinking. Another kickboxing video! Yay! But I promise you, Josie and Katarina's fighting styles are quite different from each other. What really separates Katarina Alves's Zavak from Josie's Yoyang is control. Brasileira's kicks are quite powerful and fast. I also noticed early on that they're far more precise. In my opinion, Savatores are able to use their feet the same way they use their hands. Yoyan uses a lot of combinations, but Savat seems more focused on kick placement. It's all about positioning and setting up the strikes. Sometimes it resembles long distance fencing, and other times it's a rapid barrage of attacks. Let's start with striking. First, well, let's start with slaps. Slaps that strike the palm are known as both, and Katarina has quite a few that come from various angles. Katarina reaches back and slaps her opponent with the most telegraphed slap, sending them flying back. It's a bit dramatic and more often seen in movies or during slap competitions. How can you slap? Legend has it that the reverse buff was also employed because of the ring side of the hand led to possible cuts. Katarina hits her opponent with two quick reverse debuffs or backhands. Now the wing punch is simply a continuation of the previous combination. Katarina hits her opponent twice horizontally across the left face and then uses an oblique downward strike. While it is called the wing punch, there's not a single punch involved in this combination. With the wing slap, Katarina combines a backhand slap with a regular one. It is quite fast and the slap is a great follow up to a backhand. This combination starts with two backhands and ends with a spear hand thrust. Now pick is usually a finger jab to the eyes, but I've seen it thrust into other areas before. You can see this strike in a lot of Chinese martial arts such as Xu Chin, Steak Fist, as well as Wing Chun, JKD, and Taekwondo. Usually, its targets are the eyes and throat. Attacking with the fingers seems like suicide, but usually the targets are the soft parts of the body, including the sternum, as well as the stomach, throat, and eyes. Personally, I think it's a tried and true method that works really well in the streets and even in the octagon. Katharina starts with a spear hand to the gut, causing her opponent to double over. After that, she hits him with another backhand. Now, changing levels is important in fighting, as getting the opponent to focus on their low attack takes the real focus off of their head or face. Another thing to take note of is the penetration that the spear hand has against softer targets such as the stomach. The feather chop is a downward strike with the ridge of the hand making contact. This is another one of Katharina's punchless attacks that she has in her move list. There was also a lot of cross-training in the past with other arts, and in particular, this style of striking comes from Jujutsu. Kwasitsu and Street Savat incorporated some open-hand strikes as well as grappling moves at the turn of the 20th century. The feather chop is known as the Shutozuki, or sword hand, or Shutouchi in karate. The Alula Slam is another downward sword hand strike or chop that comes out of a lunge. 
Catalina targets her opponent's neck, most likely hitting their vagus nerve, stunning them or sending them to sleep. Catalina lunges forward and swings her arms towards her opponent, following the same trajectory as the backhand or hammer fist. But the hand moves in a chopping motion, similar to a reversal thunder when sword fighting. Catalina also has a few palm hill strikes. If the spear hand increases the range of her attacks, the palm strikes offer less range. However, instead of possibly damaging the small bones of her hands, she can deliver palm strikes to more dense parts of the body. Most slaps come in an arc, but the palm strike can follow the same direct attack pattern such as the jab or even uppercut. Speaking of a palm uppercut, the Muset is a rising palm strike usually meant to raise a chin. Its name was probably inspired by a horse's feed bag. In this pairing of attacks, we can see a palm strike followed by a spinning backhand. Now, I thought this was really interesting because I've only seen a spinning backhand from one of the character in Tekken. The upper strike sends the chin up, exposing it to a spinning backhand attack, possibly knocking the person out. Katharina has a stronger version of this rising palm strike that she follows up with after a slap. She steps in, slapping an opponent and then steps forward adding more power and weight sending her opponent flying up and back until they land on her stomach. Now it's quite unbelievable, but hey this is Tekken 7, not EA Sports UFC. And finally the spear hand makes its triumphant return. After hitting the opponent with the muset, Katharina thrust her fingers into her opponent's throat. Hitting the person in the larynx causes a lapse in her breathing, leading to some psychological discomfort. Now normally, this is a difficult target as people tend to tuck their chins in fights, but the upward palm strike opens things up really nicely. When entering the dojo, dojang, ring, or academy, it's tradition to remove one's shoes. In Savat, the shoes are kept on. There are only four types of kicks allowed. The hoite, which is a roundhouse that hits usually with the instep or toe. The chasse, which is usually a front push kick or side kick. The reverse hontal, which resembles an inside to outside crescent kick. The reverse lateral, which resembles more of a hook kick. And finally, there's the lower coupe de pied bois, which is like a sliding kick from the ground. What really makes Savat kicks unique from the others are the dexterity and balance involved. The Salvatore is mobile. It seems to have the flexibility and speed to deliver kicks from various positions and target different parts of the body with ease and precision. The hoite literally translates as the whip. When delivering a roundhouse, the knee is raised, chambered, and the kick snaps out. It seems slow, but it all happens within a fraction of a second. Savat is all about control, but in this case, Katarina does a full spinning roundhouse. The variation that I've seen online is actually a spin with the hoite striking from the opposite angle. Maybe in Street Savat, some liberty is taken to allow for a full extension of power versus retracting the leg back and resetting. The chasse lateral comes out like a piston, striking the opponent with the sole or heel of the foot. Targets can be higher or lower, but one thing to note is that there are varying levels of sidekicks in Savat. Sometimes they just tap like the cock thrust here. Other times, the chasse lateral sends them flying back. The spinning back kick is devastating when it connects with full power and extension. If the target is out of range, Salvatores have this ability to spring forward on their non-kicking leg. In a lot of martial arts, this is called pumping. With their legs raised, kickers can cover a distance using a short hop while pumping their leg. Honestly speaking, I thought this was one of the most annoying things ever seen during tournaments, but I do have more respect for it now that I've seen it used in a much more dangerous arena. This is a brutal jumping spinning sidekick. The startup seems much more slower in Tekken, but in real life Savat, this attack would most likely be the end of an exchange. Who knew that such a beautiful and elegant martial art could produce one of the most feared techniques in MMA? Think about it. With the double leg takedown from wrestling, the armbar from judo or BJJ, or even the Muay Thai low kick ever present in the octagon, the chasse italian, commonly known as the oblique kick, has many of the nation's greatest fighters much more hesitant on how they approach each other now. Made famous by John Jones, the chasse lateral was already done by Craig Marduk. But with Katarina, we see a much more flexible utilization of it through combinations such as linking it with a sidekick. It is quick, and an even much more surprising combination of this attack is going from the oblique kick to a front push kick to the face. This really shows how precise Salvatore's are with their kicks and placements. She jumps and after a spin brings her foot diagonally across the opponent's head. It's actually a great counter to low kicks. Savant is quite combo heavy, but not as crazy as Josie's Yo Yan. 
Katerina's combination seemed to carry much more precision and level changes in attacks. For that very reason, I wanted to highlight a few of Katerina's combinations. In her first one, Katerina stuns her opponent with a backhand slap while moving in with a low side kick to their knee joint. The kick shoots out fast and moves back in, giving Katerina more time to reposition herself for more attacks. While we have seen a slap in the palm strike with the other variation of the slap going into an inside to outside crescent, in Savak, the reverse is known for breaking the opponent's guards by pulling the arm down or out of the way. In his third combination, Katarina starts with a lead roundhouse to the sternum, moving right into a spinning hook kick. Hitting the opponent's face with a palm hill strike allows her to step in with a much stronger swing and devastating impact. These are the more refined attacks utilized by the Apache, a criminal element during the time of La Belle Epoque. This underclass of criminals included gangs and muggers. The tactics they employed utilized the style of Savat not found in the ring but on the streets. They did not play fair. And we will look at some of Catalina's Apache inspired attacks. Looking closely at some of Catalina's throws, we can see how easy it is to manipulate someone's center of violence, not unlike Aikido. From the left of her opponent, Katarina seizes the left arm and nudges their chin up and spins them using their right arm. They are knocked off balance during the spin, where Katarina hits them with a spinning lower hook to the legs, sending them flying. In the second throw, Katarina seizes her opponent's right arm, pulling and after spinning them like a top, she hits them with a spinning backhand. They are airborne until they finally land on their neck. Although these attacks seem like they're right out of a movie or cartoon, they actually have some inspiration from a real dancing style inspired by the Apache. This dance was very brutal and it sent some people to the hospital and it actually resulted in the death of many others. Ijoite Frontal is a front kick that does not exist in box from Sevan matches. It does however exist outside the ring and on the streets. This is seen by many Salvatores as an extremely dangerous kick. Catalina uses a soccer kick. A front kick usually starts with a knee raise, whereas a soccer kick is a full swing of the leg. While the front kick is usually precise and controlled, a soccer kick is an attack thrown with pure reckless abandonment. Headbutting is rare in kickboxing, and as far as I know, even in the Southeast Asian versions, the technique is banned, other than in the rings of Letwe. Of course it is banned in books from say Savat, but Katarina Savat is a different style with different priorities. Headbutts are much better done at a closer range or after a setup, such as a soccer kick to the sternum. The opponent's focus would be taken away from their head and they would most likely not be expecting Katarina's headbutt as a follow-up. I wanted to briefly look at Katarina's hairier events. Its inspiration comes from the need to move in from long distances. You can see this in and out attack pattern a lot in karate, taekwondo and fencing. But you can also see this low advanced technique in lakan. This combination is an upward palm strike followed by a spinning hook. Throwing a spinning hook by itself may result in some opponents walking forward, but these days stepping back or ducking are the more common methods of defense. With the palm strike to the shin, the head is up and has nowhere to go as the heel makes full contact with the head. This advancing attack is an interesting display of level changes. Usually attacks to the legs were low roundhouses made popular by Muay Thai or Kyokushin. A swinging attack with the leg takes away the stamina and movement. This jumping attack appears to be an attack that's aimed at the head or torso, but actually comes down towards the legs. I remember seeing this in one of Fei Long's super attacks, and the Law family does have a variation of this. But usually they're standing, while Katharina's variation is a jumping one. There is some debate as to where many of Capoeira's kicks came from. I remember reading in Nestor Capoeira's books how his group, Senzala, introduced many techniques from Shotokan Karate into their Capoeira style during the late 60s and 70s. Capoeira has been known to absorb many techniques ever since Mark DeCasco first used it as a finisher in the mid-90s movie Only the Strong. The flare is another example, most likely introduced by Eddie Gordo from Tekken 3. 
As a result, movements from both Kung Fu and breakdancing have been added to Capoeira's kicks, leading to the mantra, Iso no e Capoeira, by many unamused mestres. Catarina is a Brasileira, and there is no doubt that during her time in Brazil, she most likely saw some Capoeira or was even trained as a child before moving on to her streets of art style. We'll look at these next few attacks and see how Catarina was able to add a little bit of Christie. Remember her? Tour Savat. If there is any credibility to Chasson creating or at least influencing Capoeira, it would have to be this kick. Now I know there is nothing new under the sun and their bodies are designed to move in a few limited ways. You can see this kick in many other disciplines such as Taido, which I again promise to look at in a future episode as well as a lot, but the link to Chasson seems to be there. The shoot na lua or foya seca is rarely used to attack. I wouldn't say it's never been used, but in capoeira, this is usually done as a floero. Floeros have a few purposes such as distracting or throwing off the opponent. It can also be used as a celebration or as a way to let off some steam. Caterina hits her opponent with a spinning hook kick and then changes direction with the hashtera. If there is one move that exemplifies capoeira, it has to be the hashtera. The hashtera is a combination of skill and timing. It requires little to no strength. If you can predict the attack, you will be able to meet the kicker's force and take them down. It looks like a weak attack as the person doing the attack is lower, but it usually ends up with the person standing and the other person grounded. Another sweep that has a lot of torque behind it. It's basically a spinning heel kick aimed at the person's lower legs. A powerful sweep by itself, its effectiveness is really compounded by the height of the other person's kick and overall posture. It really hits hard, and while the person doesn't fly back into a cartwheel, it does knock them on their backs. Season 1, Episode 5, titled Stealth Fighters, would introduce the world to the Mactelo Nekchiva, a rising kick from the ground executed perfectly by Capoeista and stuntman Latif Crowder. It has since been nicknamed the strongest kick, and while I personally disagree, the world doesn't, and many YouTubers with the exception of Taekwondo students have continued to push this agenda. Katarina spins around, and from the ground, starts with the bottom leg, followed by the top foot. I found this very interesting because it's also done in the Dance de la Poche, seen right here. Not only tied to Capoeira, you can also see this done in Salat. We saw an earlier combination of a soccer kick followed by a headbutt. It does hit high. If the opponent is ready for it, Katarina is launched or thrown. This variation ends with a front walkover. Following the same trajectory as an axe kick, the front walkover hits with a downward strike. Katarina is another misunderstood character. Much like Josie, she doesn't fight with any gloves. The biggest difference is that Katarina's Hazat style looks nothing like what you would see in the World Championships. She uses a street style, and her attacks are void of punches, but many of her seemingly inaccurate techniques are quite legit. If I was comparing her techniques to Box on Savat, I would say she's a 4.5, but after closer investigation, she's easily an 8 out of 10. Some of her attacks are just not as authentic and take their inspiration elsewhere. Her fighting stance could be better, but I love the research that went into a character that's seemingly easy to pick up and boring. Savat is a complex art with a complex history. For the longest time it was disregarded or simply shrugged off as some French sailor's pale imitation of Eastern martial arts, when in reality, it has contributed to the Eastern martial arts and the development of their kicking techniques. I could go into a long rant about this, but there is a huge lesson to be learned, and thanks to the development of organizations like HEMA, we now have a much better view into the past and have learned just how sophisticated Swordsman was around the world, not just in Japan or China. This also goes for unarmed combat, like Savat. Thank you all for watching. Viewers like you are really making this channel grow. I mean, we've already seen over 100 new subscribers this year. I admit that I honestly don't know much about you, but comments like these really help out. And I love replying to each and every one of them, as long as they, how you say, Pass the vibe check. You can find me on Instagram and my Facebook page as well, and I'm still deciding what to do with these, but I'll figure that out eventually. In the next video, we compare Katarina's Savat techniques with those from other games, 
some of which you have probably never even heard of. We'll also look at some possible additions or modifications to our moveset. Thanks again for watching. God bless each and every one of you. Feng Wei, out. Where beautiful women instinctively flock like the salmon of Capistrano. I'm talking about a little place called Aspen. I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. <laughs>